Hello, my name is Dr. Saad Jamal, and today I will be talking about drug resistance in mycobacterium tuberculosis and what exactly are the challenges we face for achieving global eradication. So let's get started, shall we? The COVID-19 pandemic itself has brought about a huge standstill in the healthcare sector. And recently, we've been starting to get the fear that because of the time and the resources that we're pouring into COVID alone, by converting already existing medical centers into COVID care centers exclusively, that there will be a new spread of communicable as well as non-communicable diseases. Now, mycobacterium tuberculosis itself is an agent of concern because it is one of the highest causes of mortality and morbidity in the world. In 2019 alone, we reported 10 million cases and 1.4 million deaths. And one of the reasons for this is drug resistance. Now, drug resistance can mainly occurs because of failure to comply to medication. And this increases both mortality as well as morbidity. And not only this, it also raises the cost of treatment for those living in low income countries, which is a particular problem because mycobacterium tuberculosis is a disease that is usually prevalent in low socioeconomic areas. Now, before delving further into the topic, let us talk about what exactly is MTB and MDRTB and XDRTB. Now, tuberculosis is an infectious disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis bacteria. It affects the respiratory system. However, it can also affect other systems, such as the gastrointestinal, as well as the central nervous system. The treatment for this is usually in two phases, intensive phase, which lasts for two months, and continuous phase, which usually lasts four to seven months. Now, during these two phases, the main drugs which are used to treat TB are isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutol, pyrazinamide, and streptomycin. Now, what exactly is MDR-TB and XDR-TB that we're so worried about? MDR-TB is a form of TB, or it's a variant of TB that is caused by bacteria that do not respond to two main drugs, isoniazid and rifampicin. XDR-TB is a rare type of MDR-TB that is resistant to isoniazid and rifampicin, plus any fluoroquinolone, such as streptomycin, and at least one of the three injectable second-line drugs, such as amikacin. Now, here is a slide that tells us why exactly we should be worried about this problem. According to drug surveillance data, which has been released by the WHO, in 2016, 240,000 people died from MDR-TB, and there were 8,000 cases of XDR-TB reported, with at least 123 countries reporting at least one case of XDR-TB. Now let us look about let, let, let us look at the mechanisms behind resistance. Now the mechanisms behind resistance can be grouped into two. First is natural mechanisms as well as mechanisms through genetic mutations. Now in natural mechanisms, the first thing that comes to mind is a cell wall. The cell wall is composed of a peptidoglycan sacculus, which is covered by an arabinogalactin layer. And these are both hydrophilic and prevent the transport of hydrophobic molecules. Furthermore, the cell wall is also covalently linked to long chain fatty acids that prevents the transport of both hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules, thus making drug delivery into mycobacterium tuberculosis a very, very difficult process. Along with this, we also have efflux pumps. Now, these are pumps which essentially pump out active drugs from mycobacterium tuberculosis outside the cell. For example, we have seen a very recent example of this in pediquillin, which is one of the newest drugs which has been approved by the WHO in the treatment of MDR-TB. However, recently we have been able to overcome this because of efflux pump inhibitors with the help of drugs such as verapamil. Now, there are also mechanisms through genetic mutations which have been acquired by MDR-TB across the years. And the first is gene mutations. Now, the first that we are talking about is the PNCA gene mutation, which can lead to decreased action of the pyrazinamide drug. Now, another example is how rifampicin is rendered less effective. Now, rifampicin usually works by binding to the beta subunit of RNA polymerase, and this disrupts RNA transcription of mycobacterium tuberculosis. The beta subunit of RNA polymerase is coded for by the RPOB gene. Now, any variation in the gene expression will lead to a decreased effect of rifampicin. When it comes to investigations regarding mycobacterium tuberculosis, there are two main problems, time as well as costs. There are a lot of investigations for mycobacterium tuberculosis, both solid media as well as liquid media. Among the solid culture media that we use to detect for MTB, we have LJ media, which is also known as the Lewinstein-Jensen media. And we also have 
are liquid media, for example, Pactech 460, as well as MGIT, which is Mycobacterium Growth Indicator Tube. However, these take a lot of time, even if they are cost sense, even if they're cost effective, even if they don't cost a lot of money, these take a lot of time. Now, the results of drug sensitivity testing take three to eight weeks in the case of solid media and around one to three weeks for liquid media. Now, any delay in diagnosis can lead to us giving the wrong drugs. It can lead to detrimental effects. For example, any delay in starting treatment and treatment failure, which can lead to an increase in mortality and morbidity. Now, once we're done with the concept of time, and how a longer time to diagnosis leads to increased mortality and morbidity. Let us look at the costs. Now, in 2010, the WHO recommended a method also known as expert MTB, which is a molecular test that helps to detect mycobacterium tuberculosis through nucleic acid amplification, also known as NAA. However, this alone has a mean cost of 30 to $50. This poses a problem since out of eight countries which bear the highest burden of TB, five of them are low-income countries. Now let us look at a couple of solutions to the issue. In 2020, the WHO recommended the use of a particular method known as TRUNAT. It is a molecular diagnostic method which is used to detect mycobacterium tuberculosis using PCR or polymerized chain reaction. And it also detects resistance to rifampicin using RT-PCR in a period of just 60 to 90 minutes. Now here we've solved the issue of time. However, this test has been successfully implemented in various national programs because of its affordability. So the WHO was able to come out with a method that was not only time sensitive, but also very cost effective. Now, looking at these issues, um, for time, that is time taken for detection, as well as affordability and medication, affordability of medications for TB. It leads us to believe that one of our main methods to fight tuberculosis must be in the form of primary as well as secondary prevention. And one of the most important methods over here is that of DOTS. Now you might be wondering what exactly is DOTS? DOTS is something that refers to directly observed treatment which is short course. So this basically implies the role of nurses, auxiliary healthcare workers in treating COVID patients. So what exactly happens here is that nurses, auxiliary healthcare workers, as well as other members of the health team work against treatment failure by delivering the drugs to those affected and by watching them take the drugs so that there is absolutely no treatment failure whatsoever. I would like to thank you for your time and I would like to thank you for your consideration for my presentation. Uh, these are my references. Thank you so much.